Okay. All right. No, I'm good. I'm well, good. I got this. Focus on your job. I got this. I'll stand here with I my got hands this. on my hips. I got this. Shut up. Here. Shut up already so I can do this because I got this. Okay. Okay. It's a trained professional. Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. We're back up here at my friend Steve Strope's Pure Vision Design. This would be the Strope guy. Hi. And I'm gonna say, before we even get going, dig back into our channel and look at some of the Strope cars we've shot in the past, because we've shot some extraordinary ones. I mean, we've shot Anvil car, we shot the Fairlane, we shot the, the Charger. The right-hand drive stout. Really amazing stuff of yours. And just so you guys know, this is a car that Steve built for Joe Rogan. It's a great looking car. It's a yeah. multi-year build. He's been very patient, so it's yeah. time to get it out and let it go home. But this is the first time it's done. You've had it out on the road, 250 plus miles yeah, you yeah, put on, so your miles on it. Mm -hmm. things so are far. working and oh, yeah. you know, you're happy with yeah. it. Because a lot of you guys are gonna think really clean Nova. A signature of what you guys do is you do things that looked like it could have or was that car. Meanwhile, you find out later, like this one, thousands of hours in metalwork alone. Oh. Yeah. Lots of changes in the car. You always start with design. You have guys that you work with. I know you work oh, yeah, a lot of with Eric Brockmeyer. Brockmeyer, Tavis Highlander. Mm -hmm. They're my right hand. I can't draw like them. It's a really good uh, design team going together. And yep. of course, my guys here, Pete, Troy, Kelly, executing those ideas yep. in real life. And on this car, of course, uh, there was a gentleman, Joey, that did a lot of the specialty sheet metal in this stuff. Yep. Mixed paint, yep. Gabe's interior. It's a team effort, but it's a team of very talented, gifted people. Yep. Typically what we do is we'll start with mechanical, but I want to kind of do it a little backwards today mm -hmm. because although the mechanical is radically impressive on this car, it is <laughs> absurd what he did, yet it looks so right. So let's let's talk through so the big, all the body mod stuff The big stuff major first. thing is down the side of the car. There's a body line, you know, just a little bit below the main crease here off the quarter and the door. Mm. That is now gone. From this area down, all the sheet metal skin is from donor 69 Camaro. The front fender sheet metal is 69 Camaro. The door sheet metal is 69 Camaro. The quarter panel is 69 Firebird. And the reason I wanted Firebird is because I didn't want to have to remove the three gills from the Camaro. The Nova, we'll say quarter panel, and the Firebird quarter panel have nothing to do with each other. And you can see the Nova panel and how much the Firebird comes out like this, or Camaro, they're both the same shape. It actually widened the car by three inches, about an inch and a half aside. Well, the Firebird and Camaro, if we used it, stops about here. It's only that long. So all this Nova stuff had to get brought out to line up and match with the Firebird, and then the body line continued. On the front fender, the Camaro front fender sheet metal sticks past the Nova like 10 inches. That all had to get lobbed off. And then of course, we worked with a Nova door, so all the door skin had to be changed at the ends to wrap around like GM did it with a Camaro door skin. It got joined here. So from here up is Nova and everything down is Camaro, the body lines and all that. The bottom line is this, somebody, myself and other people working on it gave a shit. Yeah. It didn't just magically happen with the, with the talent of metal work. Magic. Yeah. It's having an eye and making sure it looks and works. Yeah. Because this needed, for me, needed to look like GM did it. And in my opinion, we, we executed that. The rear spoiler, it used to be about an inch taller. It started life as two 1970 and a half Camaro Z28 spoilers. Why you start with two is the Nova is wider than the Camaro. So you had to cut and add. Right. Kelly basically did all the modifications, cut it up, cut it up, cut it up, fit it, and then we had molds made of it. Moving around to the back, this taillight bezel is 1969 Nova. So this whole thing bolts and unbolts the way Mother GM intended. 
but these lenses are lenses molded with GM friggin' stamp numbers in them and the whole deal, but these copy the lenses in a 69 Camaro. In the center is the gas, that gas caps from a 68, 69 Barracuda, not a Charger. And then the mildly controversial, the tips in the back are actually like solidly bolted and mounted to the bumper. And then when the exhaust comes into the tip, we have flexible stainless bellows that move. And I got to imagine the bumper's been tweaked. A little bit. It's been cut on the end, tucked in and rolled and tightened and pushed in just mm -hmm. a little. Up in the front, Again, front bumpers push and tuck just a little bit. When you look at these fins, you'll see a, a Phillips head screw up here, another one here, and then a third down there. This bottom, like three fins, is an extra You've piece added that on. taken from another one. Filling that, and then we took another grill, took two or three bars, and extended it down. So we got rid of that big plastic filler and then just blacked out that area. And then this side, it's actually opened up. My fingers can go through and you can look through in there and see the orange air filter. Again, Again something that looks very subtle, but it's like a ton of time Oh yeah, because that's hand that work. Yeah, it's cut open from the back and then hand filed because it's brand new reproduction pieces chromed and pot metal. so. Uh, Which since we're up here, let's pop the hood and, okay. and dig in here. So this is again, straightforward. General Motors was involved with the car and did the LT4 with us and the six speed. You'll notice there's no smoothie covers, there's none of that. That is there. No, it looks like you just popped the hood yep. on a ZL1 Camaro. Right, it's brand new crate motor. We disassembled a bunch of stuff, cleaned it up and painted it Chevy orange. Then of course added the nice jewelry of all the ARP hardware. Mm -hmm. Even the exhaust manifolds are the factory stainless ones, Kelly D Bird and we polished them. The thing makes more than enough horsepower. We didn't crank up the boost. We didn't add it. Well, I know bone stock, it's right around 650, isn't right. it? Right. Yeah. It's more than enough to get you in trouble. Sprinkling of stuff like the inner fenders don't look like anything. They've been cut, split, and widened. There's hours and hours and hours and hours and hours into those inner just fenders. Just into the inner fenders. Just to look like boring, stupid, OEM. original OEM, but mm -hmm. they've been widened and there's passages for all the different hoses and wiring up through the top of them. On yep. this one, I wanted to make sure that Joe had a really serviceable, functional, fun car. Yeah. Another exterior piece, your HREs. So the HREs are an out of the catalog, five spoke, uh, three piece wheel, hidden fastener. Rear's a 1912 or 1913, because the tire's a 355. And the front is a 18, I think it's an 1810, or yeah. nine and a half. Uh, and I think they're 275s on the front. Yeah. The inside barrel is powder coated the gold. And the reason for that is, is the A arms on the front IFS and the rear IRS are all in the gold. Uh -huh. And I wanted those arms to go into the same barrel And they barrel flow right color. together. Yeah, so it, the color that's works such together. such a bitch and touch. Kelly hand painted the bear in the gold and then we did the Pirelli lettering in the gold. So it all kind of works together nicely. Uh, yeah. I wanted the underneath of the car to be its own little world. So let's talk about the underside because it's not just jewelry-esque and sure. very beautiful. It's all mechanical right. stuff to, to make for a great driving So car. the front and rear subframes are both from Art Morrison. The front utilizes basically Corvette A-arms and then the rear is their IRS mm -hmm. and their own rails that we put in. And when we set in the rear IRS, we had eight by eight blocks of wood holding the body off the ground. So when we set that the suspension into place, we had that much ground clearance built into the car ahead of time. Wow. So this car's got a ton of clearance. It's got a ton of clearance. And then we, on the transmission tunnel, it was split and opened, kind of butterflied, because the drive shaft is not moving because it's an IRS. So we opened up the base of the trans tunnel and put the exhaust pipes up in there so that they make like a triangle. So they're above the bottom of the rocker and the fuel line comes over and there's actually a notch built into the rear frame section so nothing can ever hit or crush a line and the main rear brake line actually with no fittings bends around comes through the firewall runs in the interior up over the tunnel down over the rear center section and then has a fitting so there's no brake fluid that could ever leak in the inside and their whole front to rear line is inside the car. It's not even outside the car. Stuff hanging down is just a real problem. Oh, yeah. problem. oh yeah. So we try to eliminate all of that in the design process. Tuck it, pull it, push it. Yep. And one thing that I'm sure, I'll just beat you guys to it. If you see up in the car, people are like, 
All that horsepower on there is no subframe connectors. It's got a twist like a pretzel. When you open the Listen door- Listen closely, you guys, because this is badass what when, he did. When you open the door, there's a big thing right here. So we opened up the floor from the top side and put in a giant long section and it ties into where the rear subframe comes in and to where the front subframe comes in. Then you yep. can put a jack anywhere and this whole car goes Whoa. You're not, it's and, no twist or. And now <laughs> I can't take claim for that. It was either Kelly and Pete or and or Pete. I think uh, Kelly did uh. the, the work on it, but allows us to have the rear subframe still be able to unbolt and be serviceable. It's manual steering on this uh, car. It's manual steering, which Joe hasn't driven it yet. He's, he's got way bigger guns than I do, that's for sure. You put but ours together. The, the, the motor, when it, when it got delivered, they didn't have power steering because the cars that went in had electric power steering. And at that time, nobody had bracketry. But I said, hey, do you want manual? And he said, yeah. Like I said, like 275s up front. So once it's on the road, it's glorious. Because right. the feedback is beautiful. But it's just at the low, yeah, the like low speed, to... you got to make it work. Sure, right. sure, sure, sure. So the first big impact for everyone that knows their GM stuff is the dash. Yeah. Uh, the dash obviously did not come in this car. It's very reminiscent of a 67 Camaro dash. In fact, the guy that designed this dash designed the 67 Camaro dash. This is a 1965 Corvair Corsa dash that's been split and widened. We made the bezel and stuff for this for the ignition. I like putting it up over there because Joe's also a Porsche boy. It's on the left you know, side. The ignition on the left that's side. That's right. The big vents I, I like you know, venting that actually lets the heater and AC work. I'm with you. And these are pieces from Vintage Air. And then control-wise goes, well, first we're up here, and then you slide this down. Oh, God, you got a screen there. Yeah, so this is sat-nav, Apple CarPlay. <laughs> wow. So and then you can go through all yeah, your- Yeah, for sure. The gauges, the faces, and the guts behind it are all speed hut. Uh-huh. And this is all done by the, the wizard himself, Shannon at Redline Gauge Works. Uh -huh. Of uh -huh. course, but they all started with the buckets from the 65 Corvair. Everything's kicker from the amps, the subwoofers, the speakers in the package tray, speakers in the doors, and then this little controller here works with the amplifiers. It lets you dial everything And that's in. also a tele knob, isn't it? Yes, From it's a Fender Telecaster. Fender, Fender Telecaster. So when you have power windows in a car, it drives me crazy, because for the driver, you want to be able to put down one of the four windows, right? So you always have that mm -hmm. bank of four, or you got four toggle switches here. Good God. I really didn't want to deal with that. This is a four-way switch that we got from McMaster Car. So you got one, two, three, four, right? Yep. So over on one, this works the that door, right? Up, yep. down. Yep. Yep. If I doggle it to number two, that. <laughs> and of course, three is the rear quarter, four, four is, is the other rear quarter. Uh -huh. But over there, that switch will override this. Right, so, so that passenger will still, work, still gets to no go matter up and what. down on yep. their own. On his own. Uh -huh. And I'm guessing this is a Gabe's interior, probably. Yes, Gabe's. Uh -huh. Now I took the, the Corvette or pad, shortened it up, and then they covered it. And then I worked with Eric Brockmeyer, and I wanted to make an interesting door pattern, but something that still looked like the late 60s, early 70s. Yeah. What is the transmission? Is that what would it? GM six speed manual, mm -hmm. Tremec. Gets it done. Yep. You guys, one last thing is uh, the trunk, which is not a crazy finished, beautiful oh, no. trunk. It's very mechanical, serviceable. Yeah, it's utilitarian. So you can see the rails that Kelly integrated in, and then all the sheet metal around it is extra pieces of reproduction trunk floor pan from a Nova. And then the tubs are obviously wide, and we use Detroit Speed tubs. The, the kicker amps are kind of cool, they stack. This boring box there is a subwoofer and then military grade battery. And then Pete made this cover. It just covers where the fuel lines and the electronics. Ah, so you could actually pump. still use the trunk and drop oh, yeah. a duffel sure. bag or whatever sure. and not worry about it whacking the... Right, so what we had to do is because of the IRS, the normal gas tank wasn't gonna work. Yeah. And again, I wanted serviceability and usability. This is a tank from Fuel Safe that they made drop-ins for like Mustangs. Yeah. So yeah, you can throw a duffel bag in here. You can whatever you want. Yeah, in here. yeah, totally. See the little squares there? See the four little screws? Mm -hmm. Those are panels that come off and get you to the top adjustment bolts of the suspension and the shocks. Oh, wow. What, you know, something I didn't ask you, what's it geared at? Rears, if I remember right, are probably around 350s. 
29 inch tall tire Crazy. at 80 miles an hour you're 2200 2300 yeah super just drive a car yeah yep not even trying well speaking of driving man we let's should probably go, go fiddle Like I'm sitting high, I am. This seat is for Joe. Did he, he came come down out and get fit? The car? Oh, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he yeah. got fit to the pedals, the shifter arm, everything. Yeah. So it fits weird. He's not to a me. real tall guy, right? No. He's, I mean, I know he's big as all. I mean, yeah, gosh. I fit. I fit weird in this thing, but yeah. it's not for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are these seats from? They are modified Corbo, Corbo GTS seats. So you cut them down to the short back. Yep. Uh, I get these because they're wide. They actually fit a variety of people. I mean, I'm super comfortable sitting in here. I mean, I'm really comfy in here. Yeah. Oh, it's a really nice interior to be in. It's. It is. Now I know today driving. Obviously, we're we're cruising. Have you put your foot in it a bit to make sure everything feels right? And yeah, I figured you had. <laughs> the stroke look says it all <laughs> man we haven't shot in a while dude i miss how much fun it is every time we do this with you way it just feels like i told you this thing drives i mean the way it feels like a on magic the magic carpet yeah it's so smooth we actually altered the spring rates that it came the recommended spring rates for one they're jri coilovers so it's a very high quality coilover yep yep we lowered the rate on the front, and we actually increased the rate on the on the rear. Hi. <laughs> yep, there's a little power available there, isn't there, man? That was point. I know. You know, it's obviously hard to tell from the passenger seat what a car drives like, but it feels like. It feels like you could just sit in this car and drive all day long. It's very compliant. Yeah. Once this thing's rolling, it is so nice. Yeah. It's like, holy crap, this is an awesome car. Yeah. It handles so good. I'm glad I changed the spring rates that I did. Because it, believe me, it sticks like glue. It handles like a son of a bitch. Yeah. But it doesn't rattle your freaking teeth when you hit you know, gnarly bumps. I mean, a bump's a bump. You're gonna, uh, you know. Of course. But. I know you did a lot to create sound deadening. Yep. But it's really, really not a loud car until you start to dig in on it. Yep. It's well balanced. Yeah. And just a little of that blower belt one. Yeah. You hear just a little of that. Yeah. It's really nice that that's a 4,000 RPM shift. You're not buzzing the crap out of it. But you're up in the power, so there's there's four. Nice. He can cruise this car all day long, dude. Oh man, I really like this car a lot. That was fourth gear, right? And it didn't feel like it was straining at all. It was two thousand two thousand RPM at sixty miles an hour in fourth gear. I personally think this this is the power range that I personally like for cars. that nice car yeah and again we're in fifth now i haven't even got the sixth no i get it yeah sixth gear i think you'd have to be up 80. over 80 90 miles an hour the subtlety the drivability the the like it seems like a car you want to get in and go drive the fair lane seems more like an event to me or <laughs> it is martini's it's, an it event is. like a lot of those cars are I know you probably got to get yourself ready for what you're about yes. to deal oh, with. Yeah. This car, you're going to get in, turn the key, and drive down the road. Yeah, right? That kind of says it all. But like, I'm glad you noticed it. But again, I'll stress it. Feel how smooth this motherfucker is. It's impressive, dude. Not That's one interior rattle. Not one interior rattle. What you did to the exhaust out back, if you didn't think that one through, bro, it would be driving you up the friggin' wall. Every time I've taken this out, I come back, I'm like, God dang, 
this is such a nice car to go drive. Yeah, yeah. Again, I'm in fourth. Are you really? Yeah. I'm 50 miles an hour, I'm like 2,500. 2,500. If I hit it in fifth, it's like almost, it's not bogging it because it's got plenty of But torque. you're just shy of two grand. I'm two grand. At 60. At 60. <laughs> and yes, it's quiet in here. And we have the both windows down. I know. Dude. <laughs> I mean, it's, this car is bitching. Not that Joe's going to see this, but I just want to throw it out to him that if for any reason he wasn't to like the car, <laughs> that donation to Autotopia LA's, are, it's welcome. <laughs> We're okay with that. Sure. Not ever. No way. Nice, nice, nice car, dude. No drama. If I want it, if I wanted to stab it and go crazy, it's it'll there. Do, it'll do all that. No, I get that. But the cool thing is, is it doesn't promote that. Yeah, I get it. It loves that four thousand just enough. You don't have to act like a dude, like a douchebag. No, but if you want to get down, I mean, oh, it's it'll all get there. Down. I love that little bit of blower wine. Yeah, but it'll just. I mean, it'll pull and pull and yeah. pull. Yeah. Yeah. And that was about maybe three quarter throttle. Yeah. That was gentle love rolling or God, all the ground clearance has got to be so comforting driving these driveways, the streets of LA. Yep. You know, it's like you're not worried about nope. clipping anything. Nope. Oh, shit. You got your oh, great. great. Those fuckers love you guys, don't yes, they? Yes, they do. Get out of here, boys. You got to get a sign that says Noah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was just bitching getting to go for a ride in that car. After watching this thing come together over the course of the last number of years and to finally get to sit in the passenger seat with Steve Strope rolling down the road in this Nova, absolutely bitching. <laughs> I'm so knocked out right now by this car. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, man. Really, truly an extraordinary car and I hope you appreciate the quality that we just showed you here. Big thanks for hanging and watching as always, you guys, and I will see you in the next episode. All right, man, later.